Today we're going to take another look at solving word problems involving exponential equations and we're going to talk about being able to do this using a second method from the one that we've talked about before. So the first problem we're going to take a look at. In 1981, the Australian humpback whale population was 350 and it's increased at a rate of about 14% each year since then. The first thing we may notice within this is that we're talking about another increasing by some percentage, that should be our sign that we're going to be talking about an exponential equation. So when it says write a function to model this, well, we just said we're looking at an exponential equation, so that means we need two things. We need to say what is our initial amount, which it says in 1981 it was 350, so that's going to be our initial amount multiplied by our growth factor. Well, we see that we're increasing by 14%. So increasing by 14%, what number are we increasing from? That would be 100%, which is going to give us 114%. We change this into a decimal, that's going to be 1.14. So our growth factor becomes 1.14. That's raised to the x. There is our exponential equation that we're going to use to solve whatever questions it's going to ask us. One thing that may help us out is to actually go through and define these variables. We see that we have x and y in this equation, so let's name what x and y would be. If we look at this problem, there are two units that we're looking for, two variables, two units. The Australian humpback whale population. So we have the population of whales as one of our var variables. It was 350 increased at a rate of 14% each year. So there's, there's our other unit years. To figure out which one is which, we take a look. The X is the thing that's affecting the 1.14. So what are they talking about in that 14%? That 14% is that change every year. So that year is related to the 14%. That means that our x is going to be years. Most of the time that we deal with this, the x is actually going to be time. It gives us a unit of time, so there's our time. Y, then, is going to be our population. And now we can go through, and this will help us a little bit more in being able to actually solve the questions that it's going to ask us. So the first one it says is, what will the whale population be in 1990? Well, to name what the whale population is going to be, let's talk about that 1990. That's the number that they give us. Which variable is that going to represent? 1990 is talking about a year, so that means that that's going to be X. So our X is the 1990. But we don't just want to go through and put in 1990 for the X up here. If we take a look, the first year that they give us, our initial year is really 1981. That being the initial year, that's basically like saying our time is equal to zero. So in 1990 then, that's nine years after 81. So our X is actually going to be nine. That's what we're going to consider to be 1990. All we have to do, since we know which variable... We have a number for it, we just have to take that variable, plug it in. So y equals 350 times 1.14 raised to the ninth power. And we just need to now solve for y. If we take a look, y is already by itself, so it's just a matter of being able to simplify this side down, which this side is all just numbers, so we can easily type this in to our calculators and come up with an answer of approximately 1138. And that's our population, so 1138 whales. If we take a look at this other one, it says, when will the whale population reach 20,000? Well, it's talking about when will the population be 20,000. So this 20,000 is our population, which is going to say then population is our y. So right now it's telling us y is equal to 20,000. Just like what we did in the last example, let's just take that, what we did with the x, take the y, plug it into our equation up here. We're saying the y is 20,000, so put in the 20,000 for y. So it becomes 20,000 equals 350 multiplied with 1.14 raised to the x power. And it's just now a matter of being able to say, what do we do with this equation? The first method that we've talked about is being able to go through and say, let's graph this. We can really break this equation up at the equal sign into two separate parts. We have this side, we have this side. These are really two separate equations, the 20,000 and this 350 times 1.14 raised to the x. And we can basically just take these two things and treat them as two separate equations, namely y equals 20,000, y equals the 350 one times 1.14 raised to the x. We can graph both of these things and see where the two equations, the two graphs intersect. If we go through and actually do the graphing to this it would give us a value for x of 30.88 years. Since we're trying to find x, that's our years. Which, 
we assume that to be since, you know, in year 30, it wouldn't quite be the 20,000. So in year 31 was when it would first reach the 20,000. So we would say from 31 years from that 1980, it would be approximately 2012 that this population would actually reach 20,000. That was the first method that we talked about, just being able to do the graphing. Since we just introduced something called logarithms, we're going to take a look at one of the properties that we have that actually uses logs. Most calculators just have you do log base 10, that common, that common logarithm. Log base 10 is the one thing we're allowed to actually type in where it just says log and then the number on our calculators. So when we have a log of another number, we can't really type that in. But we have this property of logarithms that allows us to be able to change that base number to any number that we really want to. It's called the change of base formula. What it says is that if you have log base b of x, assume b and x just to be two random numbers, you can rewrite that to be the log of x over the log of b where your bases now become a and a can be any number that you want it to be. So the ones that we can use on our calculator would be base 10. So a lot of times we're just going to make that A come out to be base 10. There are other examples like this one over here where we may not want it to be base 10, but we can go through, we can make this base 10. So if we want to talk about being able to evaluate these and find out what these are, log base 5 of 10. Well, we've talked in the past about saying, well, I'm not quite sure what this is equal to, so I'm going to say it's equal to X. We could try to write this out in an exponential equation and go 5 raised to the x equals 10. But if you take a look at this, there's no easy way to figure out what power we'd have to raise 5 to to be able to get 10. So we have it in logarithmic form here. We have these two non-nice numbers, 5 and 10. To try to figure out what this is, we can take this, instead of changing it into logarithmic form, or into, into exponential form, we can use this change of base property and say this is going to equal log of one of the numbers over log of the other number and that's still going to be equal to what the other side is which is x. We just have to take a look at how we know which number goes where. The b here in logarithmic form is called the base. That base goes into the bottom of the fraction which the easy way to think about this is the base of the logarithm goes into the basement of the fraction. Base, basement, it's a nice way to remember which number goes where. So the base of this log is 5. That means it's going into the base of our fraction, which means the other number is going to go in the numerator. So it becomes log of 10 divided by the log of 5, which if we type that in to our calculator is log of 10. It's going to come up with a parentheses. Make sure that you close this parentheses after the 10. And same thing when you do divided by log of 5, close that parentheses. When we type that in, that's just going to give us an answer of approximately one point. 4, 3. Meaning if we take 5 and raise it to the 1.43 power, that's going to give us approximately 10 since we're rounded to 1.43. Same thing here, log base 2 of 27 is just going to become, if we want to figure out what this is, log of one of the numbers over log of the other number. The base is 2, so that means it's going to go into the basement of the fraction. And what we're taking the log of, then that 27 goes up top, which this is really just equal to approximately 4.75. Meaning that if this is equal to approximately 4.75, that 2 raised to that power is going to give us approximately 27. Again, just because we rounded it to be that 4.75. So we're going to take a look at another word problem. And we're going to talk about being able to solve this one where we get into an issue of graphing it instead of graphing using logarithms. So we're going to take a, have a second method to be able to solve it. So a motor scooter purchased for $12,000 depreciates at an annual rate of 15%. There's that depreciates, and our, our percentage that is decreasing by each time, that's the thing that's going to tell us, hey, we have an exponential function. So let's find out what that growth factor is. We take 100%, depreciates by 15%, meaning that we are left with 85%. So our growth factor, 0.85. We take the amount that it started with initially, which was 12,000. So y equals 12,000 times 0.85 raised to the x. Again, we want to define the variables y and x. The, per, the percentage is talking about an annual rate. Annual means yearly. So x, again, is going to represent years. We have another x that's going to be time. And then our other unit that we're working with 
is just the $12,000 implying the, the money that we have. So X is years, Y is time. How much will the scooter be worth in four years? It's giving us the number four, telling us it's years, so it's years, so that means that X has to be four. Do the substitution. Y equals 12,000 times 0.85 raised to the fourth power, which we do 0.85 raised to the fourth, multiply that by 12,000, and that's going to give us an answer of approximately $6,264.08. So that's what our scooter will be worth in four years. We take a look at this other one. When will the scooter be worth $2,000? Well, it's asking us how much money will it be worth. It's giving us the money, which means it's giving us the Y. So this thing here is saying that the Y is going to equal 2,000. We go through, we plug that in, saying $2,000 will equal 12,000 times 0.85 raised to the X. Now we're looking for that exponent. So here's where we have those two sides that are we're saying are equal to each other, that if we want to do this by graphing, break it up along the equal sum sign say y equals the first one y equals the second one and then these are the two things that we are going to go through and graph on our graphing calculator find the intersection point see where they cross and that will tell us how many years it will take to be worth 2000 we're going to talk about option number two now option number two is we take this equation and we're actually going to go through now and solve the equation we talked before we couldn't solve it well now we can go through and solve it with logarithms First thing we want to do is try to simplify this out in any way that we can. Is there anything that we can simplify fairly easily in this problem? We take a look here, the x and the exponent, we're not really going to be able to work with that, but this 12,000 is just being multiplied by that. So we can get rid of that 12,000 by dividing it. Which 2,000 divided by 12,000, the zeros will cancel themselves out. 2 divided by 12 just reduces down to 1 sixth. And that's going to equal 0.85 raised to the x power. This is where we said we couldn't go through and solve this, get the x by itself, but when we introduced logarithms, this was the way of being able to get that exponent by itself. So we can take this and change this from exponential into logarithmic form. We can use that property that we talked about that b to the x equals a is the same exact thing as log base b of a equals x. We identify what our base is, that thing that's being raised to the exponent, which in this case is the 0.85. So we're going to say this is log base 0.85, and then we can do the circle technique here of 1 sixth equals our exponent equals x. And now x is by itself. But the problem that we have is we can't type in log Point, base 0.85 of 1 6 on our calculators. This is where we're going to go back to what we just talked about, this change of base property. We have where we have two non-nice numbers down here. We can rewrite this to be log of the one number over the log of the base. And so we can do that same exact thing here. We can do log over the log. This being the base means it's going to go into the basement of the fraction, so 0.85, and 1 6 is going to be up here and that's just going to equal x. We type this into our calculator, log of 1 6, make sure we close that parentheses after the 6, log of, uh, divided by log of 0.85, close our parentheses there, which when we type that in, we would get 11.02, and then that's going to be in years. This is the same exact answer that we would get if we use the same method here of going through and being able to graph it. So if you weren't really comfortable with the graphing method of what do I need to type in, how do I use my calculator to change the window to be able to go through to see these two graphs intersect, we now have the second option of using the logarithms and then using this change of base property to go through to be able to get an answer. So we're going to take a look at one more problem. A new softball dropped on a hard surface from a height of 25 inches rebounds to about 40% of the height on each successive bounce. So it's telling us that it's, it's bouncing. Each time it bounces, it's coming out to be 40% of its original height. That's the thing that's going to tell us, hey, we're dealing with an exponential function. So we start off with initial amount, which it says initial amount is 25, is what it gets dropped from. We need to figure out what our growth factor is. Now, most of the time that we've seen these percentages, we've wanted to say, all right, well, it's only going to be 40%, so we get rid of that 40%. But this time, it's actually giving us the amount that we're going to have left. It's only going to reach 40%, so we only have to multiply this then by 0.4. We don't have to go through and actually calculate what that is because it's already telling us what we're going to have left. 
Then it's just raised to the x power. Let's define our variables. What does y equal? What does x equal? We take a look. The two things that we're talking about would be height, and the other one is going to be the 40% of the height on each successive bounce. So we're not dealing with time here. Now we're dealing with bounces. Well, 40% each time that it takes a bounce, there's our 40% of the x. So x is going to be bounces, which means y then is going to be height. I want you guys to go through and I want you to solve this problem for homework. And I want you to solve this problem using logarithms.